morning. I am Tracy Browning, Executive Director of Ascension Parish Tourism Commission, and I'd like to introduce now Mayor Leroy Sullivan for a welcome and a prayer. Good morning. I would like for uh, the city councilman for the city of Donaldsville to also to come forward, please. On behalf of my, myself, uh, Councilman Reginald Francis and Councilman Brent Landry, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the city of Donaldsonville. Uh, the city of Downsville, the third oldest city in the state of Louisiana. One full of history. We have a lot of great food, uh, great culture, and most of all, wonderful people. I ask that you would enjoy yourself uh, and your stay here in the city of Downsville. And if there's anything we can do as uh, elected official for the city of Downsville, please don't hesitate to, uh, to call them on us. Uh, to our Lieutenant Governor, uh, a friend of the city of Donaldsonville. This is not his first trip, so we won't say just welcome to you because uh, you're always willing to come here to help out in the city of Donaldsonville. Uh, gracious Father, as, as we come before you, we come with a heart rejoicing. Rejoicing because you have given us another opportunity to uh, enjoy life. Father God, we just thank you for uh, all that you have done for us. We thank you for uh, all of those that played a part in, in this uh, historical event that we have right here in the city of Donaldsonville. Father God, we ask that you bless everyone that's assembled here. We ask that you bless their families. And Father God, we ask that you will just allow this to be the beginning of a great relationship between our state, our parish, and our city, and the surrounding communities that we would all come together in order to make this state we call Louisiana a great state. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming to our unveiling of Donisonville's historic portal to the past. We welcome all of our great tourism friends today. So now we would like to show you a short video. First, I'd like to take you back on how this project got started. Often when describing Donisonville, whether it was on a sales mission with tour operators or a, tra or a trade show, and sharing pictures and telling them about the historic town, I began to wonder, how will they learn about the history? And how will they find the most significant features? In 2017, I began having discussions about how we could educate our visitors about the history of Donisonville in a way that enabled our visitors to discover it on their own. In consulting with our tourism bureaus, an idea evolved to create a series of wayside exhibits, which we are referring to here as portal panels. I connected with David Guiney, the senior exhibit planner, with interpretive direction on a similar project he designed, and I'm grateful that he is here today to assist us with the narration of the presentation. Thank you, David, for joining me. Thanks for having me. Then Lee Malonso and I began to brainstorm about potential topics and sites. We evaluated many promising sites, but we were able to settle on seven sites that we needed to do with compelling land viewscapes, each of which focused on Donisonville theme and each of which identified multiple points of interest. We decided to incorporate high resolution aerial photos on each panel with a you are here indicator to orient visitors to the landscape. We also knew we needed help with the research, so we sought out the aid of many historians and community members to help with the process of collecting information, images, and artifacts. They also became very helpful in the check finding and reviewing the layout proofs in the end because so many people had so much to share, we quickly knew the challenge was to determine what to include and how it could be, how it could fit effectively. We started with a panel size of two foot by four foot, but we realized it wasn't enough space, so we added a foot to make them two by five. The goal was to have a professional product that everyone could be proud of to educate our visitors about our great city and they needed to be aesthetically appealing additions to the charm of Donaldsonville. So with that, I'd like to share with you pictures of each portal 
starting with the Riverwalk area. There are two panels on the levee top. One is facing the city and showing an overview of historic Donaldsonville, a magnet for Indians, explorers, planters, merchants, and pirates. We show the Lafon 1806 plan, which is amazing to see that the city still maintains a plan of more than 200 years old that is still mostly intact. It also mentions the ascension of our Lord Catholic Church, River Road African American Museum, Chef John Foss, Crescent Park, and Louisiana Square. Did you know that the birthplace, Donaldsonville was the birthplace of Francis T. Nichols, the governor and chief justice of the state Supreme Court? We also and added some things along the way, and so David and I wanted to share with you a couple of things. Yeah, and uh, refer to the exhibits as portals because unlike exhibits that we've done in the National Park System over the years where we have one feature and one exhibit interpreting it, this is really, each of the panels of the seven are opening up another world of multiple things in town. And um, so I think that's something kind of unique, something that in, in my career we really haven't done before. And I'm interested to see what people around the state that come to Donaldsonville might, might think about this, whether it would be a good thing to do in other, in other towns. Uh, we do have um, a brochure that Tracy and her staff, her designer, Kylie, uh, put together that is on the first exhibit up on the river bulk. So if you uh, receive this brochure somewhere else at one of your shows or you distribute it mm -hmm. in the area, uh, it will guide people to where they can start up on the river walk. Um, we really need to emphasize that idea of how much help we got from everyone. We did. We couldn't have done it without all of the help of everyone uh, that helped us along the way. And there was so much great information and artifacts. And Andrew Capone was one of those people that helped us a tremendous amount through this project. And uh, we really appreciate it. <coughs> Andrew, raise your hand there, will you? So people know. I'm Glenn and Falgu was another one that really played a big part in it too. Uh, so we were really excited to have Glenn as well. Glenn, thank you. The other panel on the levee top looks towards the Mississippi River, America's greatest river system and transportation artery. In the late 1600s, French explorers discovered a place where the major bayou branched off from the Mississippi River and called it the Fork or La Fouche. The 1858 plan shows plantations lying in the riverbanks. No highways or railroads existed then. Transportation was by water uh, to transport the crops, the goods, and the passengers. In 1868, Union gunboats fired on Donisonville in retaliation for hostile fire from Confederate guerrillas in town, and much of the town was destroyed. Of course, today, you will see some different ship traffic including riverboats making their way up and down the river to destinations like Homeless House and Gardens. Mm -hmm. And looking at the layout we have up on the screen, uh, if you look at the aerial photograph of the river, it's the brown water over there on the, on the uh, left side, you see a little black pointer. That's where you are standing on, on the riverfront. And the reason this is important is because uh, to me, I'm from the Washington, D.C. area. When I stand up there and look out, it looks like a lake to me. It doesn't really look much like a river. And you can't really see past the trees. They see well, where the bend in the river really does. You can't see past well. the trees. So again, in all of these exhibits, we're kind of lifting everybody up. You know, this is not Acadia National Park in Maine, the Cadillac Mountain. Louisiana doesn't have a lot of big, really tall mountains, right? It has other resources <laughs> that are more fun than the, than the mountains. Uh, but anyway, uh, for Donaldsonville, that's a high point. We want to get people up higher. So uh, we focused on, uh, on doing that in our exhibit. And um, we course. love the, the river. We love the river walk because it's beautifully landscaped. I think Donaldsonville can be very proud of both Crescent Park and what's happened up there on the river walk. <coughs> and so we thought, we got to bring people here, give them an overview and then get them started. And you know, I just want to mention that it's very special to have a river walk here. Not everyone has that, and so uh, we always talk about it. People from other places don't know what the Mississippi River looks like, and they want to see it. And so 
we are very excited that we have something in our parish to share. So there is a, a, a handicap accessible ramp. Uh, there's parking there too as well with benches on top of the river, of course. And so it's really a great place for people to get out of the car and really take their time and see it. And of course you can jog or walk up and down the river, walk as well and spend as much time as you'd like there. Mm -hmm. But you know, whenever we started this project though, Lee and I were up yeah. there looking at the water yeah. and the river and talking about all of these panels and trying to figure out where this might happen. And also, uh, thank you, Lee Malasso, raise your hand, for all, everything that you helped me through from the start to the finish of this project as well. Mm -hmm. um, community support, uh, Sid Marshawn, uh, he actually does some river work, uh, river related work in his law practice. But his family over the years had been collecting Donaldsonville images and, uh, and facts and published books and all of that stuff. Is, the fact that the community remembers its history is very important in a project like this. So it's just another... Um, Absolutely. Um, he has a lot of um, family photos and images and things like that to, that he shared with us as well. And then of course we had um, Matthew Noel. I think he's here too. He did all of the drone footage for us uh, along the project and some images that we've used. Yeah. And so uh, we couldn't be more pleased with, it's a different perspective to look at Donisonville, so. Matthew is actually a, a noted food photographer in Louisiana. If you look at the high level photograph uh, in the exhibit and then the old Civil War era uh, plan of this section of the river, uh, it really helps everyone to understand, um, you know, better what was happening today and in the past. Like uh, Andrew uh, pointed us to this image here. The little the dot is Donaldsonville before there was a Donaldsonville, and it was very important to the Europeans exploring this part of the country. And then over here, Bayou Le Bouche is very important waterway at this time. And if we look at today's view, we've got a little bit of a squiggly line here saying by the bush, but of course it's more managed waterway right now. But the visitors can really begin to understand what all of this is about. And I'm hoping a tour guide could bring people around and use these images as teaching aids. Crescent Park, the grand portal into the heart of historic Donisonville, just sits a short distance from the levee for a reason. The city market house was built in 1853 and then sat in the location where the pavilion is now. This area was the hub that drew people into town. The B. Lemon building, B, I'm sorry, the B. Lemon and Brothers store built in 1877 was one of the first and largest department stores in Louisiana. There they sold much more than what a department store sells today. It had clothing and shoes, but also saddles and hardware and farm supplies. It was like the Walmart of the 1800s. <laughs> and of course, we couldn't have done what we did without Jay Lemon. <laughs> we had interesting visits with Jay. We really appreciate your help, Jay. Thank you so much. Fort Butler was built by the Union uh, here because of the importance of the Mississippi River and Bayou Lafourche connection. Even though not much remains of the fort, the exhibit illustrates its impressive size. In 1863, Confederate forces assaulted the fort, but the moat and the palisades hampered the attack. Um, when I first saw the Fort Butler site, I was trying to figure out, you know, where, where was it? at the very beginning of our investigation. Later we talked to Andrew and Glenn, we learned a lot more about it. But you can, uh, the, the monuments there, the stone monuments commemorate what happened. But what we were trying to do was to illustrate what happened to Battle of Fort Butler. And this week, we met an archeologist who is working there today, who is, uh, because the new uh, pump station is coming in and they're doing an investigation over there, finding more things. They found bullets, they found bottles, they found other things that maybe would indicate uh, what was there at the time. And I think more will be found as they continue to excavate for the, for the pipeline. Sure. But they were kind of excited about being able to see our exhibit. And then remember what he recommended that should happen there? 
Well, he said, oh, we're finding so many things, we think you should have a museum. We said, we would love to have a museum for Fort Butler in Donisonville. <laughs> and we know there's so many things that are housed at uh, LSU archives, and of course there are some friends of ours that have things, and you know, so yeah, I think there's plenty. Uh, also, we had found the, um, a model in the Ascension Parish Library here as well, and Miss Regina Mistretta helped us. Regina, I know you're here somewhere. Raise your She's hand. right back there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the library was a crucial resource for us. Uh, they have such wonderful records and files that are separated and have uh, so many maps and things that were really beneficial to this project. And uh, it was just right here in our backyard that we just mm -hmm. found it and had great assistance in finding what we were looking for to help the project along. Louisiana Square was once the location of the state capital of Louisiana in 1830. Donisonville is the parish seat of, and the clerk of court houses records dating back to 1770. One record from 1849 is a marriage record of what is believed to be John Lafitte's son. The exhibit identifies the birthplace of Governor Francis T. Nichols and the relocated doctor office of Dr. John Lowry from the late 1800s. Jewish citizens also built a synagogue here as there were a large number of Jews that resided here. So we also had, you know, assistance from the clerk of court's office and uh, Bridget Hanna and all of the clerk of court staff there was so helpful with the records and images uh, when, and also helping us with our presentation today. And uh, I think uh, Brett Landry is here, I think, no? I thought I saw him slip in early, but they really were helpful with all of the process and so, uh, and the checking of everything, but it was quite interesting to see the records and things that they have that are dating back so many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not to mention this event today worked out that we were able to use the courtroom here, which is a really good setting for, for this. Um, little story, um, we got a tour from it's James James Wilson gave us a tour of the jail, and outside the jail there was a pile of brick bats. And as I've learned in working at Donaldsonville, there's bricks everywhere, and some of them maybe are pretty significant bricks that maybe came from the fort. And bricks that were in the fort started going other places. I think they went down to the bayou at one time and were used for a lot of different purposes. So. Uh, I thought, wow, we should get a picture of that. Might be able to use it in an exhibit. And uh, it was a brick, uh, just like this, a brick bat. Brick bat is a part of a brick. So the story at Fort Butler is the Confederates gunpowder got wet, some of them anyway, and they started throwing <coughs> the brick bats up at the fort. And uh, so it's a kind of a little, I don't know, this might be one that was hurled at a Union defender of, uh, <laughs> I will return it, uh, Mayor, or whoever's in charge of this, the uh, parish, I'll return this. But, but uh, so if you look at our Fort Butler exhibit again. We have James's hand and the brick in there. <laughs> yes, the problem, I forgot to tell him to take his watch off. So I don't think the digital watch would have been on the uh, hands of the Confederates. But anyway, there he is. And of course, these are the Confederates down here. Uh, assaulting the wall of the fort. African American Life describes the Wall School, which represents thousands of rural schools for African American students in the early 1900s. Booker T. Washington and Sears Roebuck President Julius Rosenwald headed up this ambitious school construction project. The True Friends Benevolent Society Hall housed a fraternal group that provided medical and burial insurance for members as well as carnival balls, dances, and jam sessions with concerts by artists such as Fats Domino and James Brown. Claiborne Williams resided in Donisonville and built a career as a jazz band leader and teacher. The River Road African American Museum tells compelling stories of lifelong uh, life along the river from New Orleans to Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is just a fabulous museum that we are so grateful we have in Donisonville as well. There's so much to tell 
and we just have a little piece of it of the history on this panel, but certainly can learn so much more uh, by visiting the museum. And Daryl Hambrick, I think Daryl's here. There he is. Uh, so he uh, was a great help uh, with all of the research and the things that we did on this panel as well and checking facts for us. So thank you, Daryl. Sure. Ascension of Our Lord Catholic Church is a sacred place on the river for more than 250 years. The large Gothic structure built in 1843 was the second Catholic church to be built, but did not open until some 50 years later. The Catholic cemetery is among the, old, the oldest and largest in southern Louisiana. Burials include Confederate soldiers and Union soldiers. St. Vincent's Institute was established about 1850 as a school, hospital, orphanage, and convent. It stood in the line of fire during the Civil War, but survived. Today, it is a part of the Ascension Catholic School. And maybe something nice about this exhibit is if tourists want to see the church and they show up when there's a funeral or when the door might not be open, they can still come and this is always accessible all of the time. And it's the only one of our exhibits that has a roof over it. There was a lot of cooperation from the parish, both the pastors yes. and... Uh, That's right, and Boo LeBlanc, I think Boo is here today. There he is. Thank you so much, Rick. You know, we had a lot of help as well from the church and checking the facts and looking over uh, the exhibits as I brought them throughout the process and all, and we appreciate your help with that as well, Boo. In viewing the portal panels, they point out things from many years ago that you will still see today and some things that are gone now, but are a very important part of our history. To visit all of them, it's about a two and a half miles uh, that would be a great fitness walk or a trail. Uh, you could certainly ride a bike or you can visit them by car. Also, you can start the tour at any one of them. Now I feel this is an attraction to our tour operators and at sales missions to groups looking for historical cities to visit. I also hope that this can be a resource for others to use for such as field trips, special interest groups, and residents as well to learn about the history of their city. I'm very proud of the community assistance to create a destination for Donisonville. On the back of your program, you will see an extensive list of all of the people and entities who provided assistance with this project. Uh, the greatest supporter and ambassador of tourism, the Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. Thank you. Um, it's a real honor to be here today. I'm, you can see why this project is so successful. Um, Tracy, what a, what a great champion you are, Mayor, Paris President, um, your elected officials supporting not only tourism, uh, but this community. Um, this is a special day. Um, as we continue to uh, ask people to get off the main interstate and see the great towns and cities around Louisiana, this is another valuable tool in our toolbox uh, to do that. The trails and byways has been so successful around Louisiana, we continue to add, and these uh, will e absolutely help us add to that uh, ability to get people to, to have more things to show them as we lure them out of the big cities to see all the historical sites around Louisiana. Uh, we unveiled the Lights, Camera, Louisiana movie trails. We know people want to go where movies were shot and where people were shot, like Bonnie and Clyde right here in Louisiana. And, um, and having the, the walk on the Mississippi River here is really going to help draw international tourists. Last year, we went to China uh, on a tourism summit. And, uh, and they love the Mississippi River. And to give you an idea of the Chinese tourists uh, that are coming to America, in Shanghai alone, one city, 
they issue 4,000 visas a day uh, to come to America, uh, one city. Incredible growth opportunity for us. And as I said, they love the Mississippi. So another great opportunity for us to lure them to Donaldsonville. Another thing we've been working on over the last year is the Civil Rights Trail. Uh, we've got so many um, champions uh, and, and, and really historical places in Louisiana, a story that's never been told. And uh, we were late to the game. Uh, many years before I got elected, uh, Alabama, Mississippi was already working, uh, and they have lured tens of thousands of tourists to their states to follow the Civil Rights Trail. We were, we were uh, proud to join up with the other southern states and now have been going around having meetings around the state identifying those sites. This museum here will absolutely be a part of that trail. Uh, and, and Alabama's had unbelievable success with people from all over the world coming to follow that civil rights trail. Um, and surely, if you haven't been to one of the meetings, those are con continue. At the end of this year, we will have a selection committee pick 20 of the first sites that we will highlight on this trail but then we will continue to add uh, locations and things that happen here in Louisiana that we want to tell the world about. So another great opportunity uh, to lure people here. I also want to mention, um, because we haven't done a good job at exploring and, and making it easy for tourists to know all these great historical places in Louisiana. This year, we will be revamping the museum board. Uh, we've got a, a study going underway right now to decide, do we need a board in New Orleans concentrating on those museums, one in Baton Rouge and maybe one in Shreveport, with three separate uh, boards raising money and, and helping not only promote, uh, but also to help fund some of the outlying museums. Many of the museums that were under the Secretary of State were given back to local government with no funding, and communities have struggled to keep the doors open. Uh, we hope because of the private-public partnership uh, that the legislature allowed us to set up, uh, we're going to be able to use that by doing private-public partnerships at our state parks, using a valuable building we have in the French Quarter to put out for a 99-year lease. That money will go in, and we can only use that for culture, recreation, tourism. So we would allow us some funds to finally start helping local museums. So, Mayor, you talked about uh, you kind of nudged me when she talked about the museum. That's exactly what we want to be able to do with these funds to help create those new opportunities to draw people to communities um, that have such a love and passion for their rich history. And I got to tell you, um, this team here, Tracy, makes it easy for me. Uh, I wish every community around the state had the same love and passion uh, that you have here for your town and your cities. So uh, it's an honor to be here. We're going to continue to work together. We had an unbelievable year last year, a non-percent increase, the largest increase ever since we've been keeping records in, in Louisiana. Over 51 million people visited little old Louisiana. Uh, we hit and way above our weight and attracting tourists. Uh, what we've got to do now is focus on getting them out of the big cities to see all these great historical sites and what you've done here today is surely going to make my job a lot easier in doing that. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your love and passion for Donaldsonville. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you so much. You always give me nice gifts. <laughs> of course, I'd like to thank my board and staff, and I know I have some um, previous board members here as well. So uh, we really appreciate all your help throughout the support of this project. Of course, I couldn't do it alone, and we had so many people involved in it, but I have a, a tremendous support system from our staff and board, and so I really do want to recognize them. Um, now I'd like to invite you to proceed outside to the Louisiana Square for the unveiling of the portal panel in the square and then immediately following we're going to have lunch provided by Cafe Lafouche in the tent that's right adjacent to the square so thank you all.
Well, this is uh, this whole project is great for the city of Donaldsonville and Ascension Parish. It, it gives us an opportunity to display the history of the city of Donaldsonville and uh, attract more tourists to come to Donaldsonville just to find out, you know, and be educated about the history of Donaldsonville. One of the things the portals uh, will do for the city is it will keep that history alive and active and you know you can always go and read about it and look at the, the buildings that are still standing and you know and say wow uh, you know I can actually physically touch the building uh, or the, even the mighty Mississippi River and know the significance that it had for the city of Donaldsonville. been talking about putting historical trails around Louisiana together encompassed with the museums. This is going to be a great tool in our toolbox to do that um, with the trails and byways, the Civil Rights Trail, Lights, Camera, Louisiana, the movie trail. This is a great opportunity to really highlight this beautiful town with the Mississippi River and the increase in Chinese visitors. Great opportunity here for us. The sky's the limit. We're just getting started. Uh, I'm really excited here today. Billy, what was it like working with Tracy in her office? Let me tell you, you can feel it when you walked in this building, the love and passion, and it starts here with Tracy and, and her passion and love for this community. And, um, and you feel it in everybody here today. They truly have a love. You can see it when you go down the streets here. They're clean. This is a great community. A lot of communities around Louisiana could use this as a great example about what to do back home and how much pride and love you can have for your community. Though we apart, you part of me still. For you were my prayer in Donaldsonville. Well, I found my thrill on Blueberry Hill. On oh, Blueberry Hill is where I found you. The moon stood still on dream came pit the wind in the yellow plane love sweet melody but all of them vowed we made what now but to be Part of me still, for you were my thrill in Donaldsonville. This project means so much, I think, to so many people, and I am so proud that we had so many of the residents and community of Donisonville to be a part of it. I mean, we couldn't have done it without them. And so it just it was all of these wonderful stories and images and artifacts that existed here, and they just needed a way to bring it all to the surface and let people really learn about the great city of Donisonville. So we are really excited that we have seven portal panels to share with everyone. Uh, we created a brochure to help you find your way around the city and to be able to see them all. You can walk it, you can ride a bike, or you can go by car. So it's just a great way for you to spend some time and learn about the history of Donisonville. Sitting in the morning sun, I'll be sitting when the evening comes. Watching the ship rolling, Lord, I'll watch him roll away again. Oh, I'm sitting on top of the bed, watching the 